Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be answering your most commonly asked questions on spironolactone for treatment of hormonal acne. Hi, my name is Dr. Jenny Liu. I'm a board certified dermatologist and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now, as a board certified dermatologist, I see hormonal acne all the time. I think I see way more adult women with acne than I do with teenage girls. And spironolactone is one of the most commonly prescribed medications for hormonal acne. If you want to learn more about hormonal acne in general, as well as what other treatments are available, please check out my video on hormonal acne. Today, I'm purely answering your most frequently asked questions on spironolactone for the treatment of hormonal acne. All right, question number one. How long can I be on spironolactone for? any adverse effects with long-term use. The good news is you can be on it for as long as you wish, as long as you're tolerating it well, you're not pregnant, nor do you have any plans of having kids anytime soon. I have a handful of patients who really like the effects that spironolactone has in controlling their acne. They're tolerating it really well. They're not pregnant, nor do they want kids anytime soon. And they're, they are on it for years and they really don't want to come off of it, um, fearing maybe potentially the acne may flare. As far as like adverse effects goes, it is relatively safe for long-term use and it's really meant for that. We know from large scale studies, if there is no personal history of underlying kidney disease, heart disease, nor any other medications that work similarly to spironolactone, it is really safe to take long-term and we actually have even stopped checking labs because study has shown that there's really no utility in checking labs because it is just such a safe medication. Question number two, does spironolactone help with hirsutism? So for those who are not familiar with the term hirsutism, it's a condition that does describes thicker, darker hair that women will grow, typically in a male pattern. So maybe along the lower chin jawline here on the body. It is often due to excessive androgen. And this can be due to various things, but one of the most common causes of hirsutism is a condition called polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now hirsutism is driven by excessive androgen and a part of hormonal acne is driven by androgen. And so spironolactone, because it blocks androgen, it can be a helpful treatment for hirsutism. The doses often are a little bit higher than what we typically would give for treatment of acne. For acne, I find that most of my patients do really well between 100 to 150 milligram daily. For hirsutism, a lot of the studies and just the benefits really come with maybe even 200 milligram or even slightly higher. And the other thing that spironolactone can be helpful for in addition to hirsutism is female pattern hair loss that again is driven by excessive androgen. All right, next question. Can you take while breastfeeding? Absolutely. And I feel like this is a information that not people know about. Now, obviously spironolactone is not recommended during pregnancy. Our body goes through so many changes during pregnancy and postpartum, and we don't have a lot of great options available when you're pregnant. But postpartum, you can definitely take it during lactation. And many moms who choose to breastfeed for an extended period of time maybe feel like they don't have a lot of options available for their acne, but this is definitely one of them. There is a like less than 1% of the metabolite of the medication excreted into breast breast milk. However, WHO as well as the American Academy of Pediatrics both recognize spironolactone as a safe option during lactation. The only thing that I find that sometimes, especially in the beginning when you're first establishing milk supply, that it may just interfere with the production of milk supply, maybe because spironolactone is a diuretic and if you're dehydrated, you're not making breast milk. So I recommend make sure that you have a well-established milk supply first and then see your dermatologist and can talk about the options and the dosing. Next question, will acne come back if I stop taking it? Really good question and not a straightforward answer. So in general, hormonal acne, it's gonna keep coming back. Even women who are perimenopausal can still struggle with acne. Anytime our body goes through hormonal changes, whether that's pregnancy, changing methods of contraception, starting and or stopping spironolactone, our body's gonna go through an adjustment period. And for some individuals, when does your body adjust? may flare a little bit in the beginning, but once your body adjusts, it may not be as bad and you may not feel that you need to be on an oral medication. Cause I get it too. Like, you know, if we can avoid taking a pill for an extended period of time, why not, right? For some individuals, once you stop the medication, their acne comes back just like that. Everybody's different. Our body and how we respond to hormonal changes are different. Understand that with these hormonal treatments, just like it takes a few months for the medications to ramp up to full efficacy, the adjustment period may take a few months, meaning once you stop, it may 
be a few months before you actually see any flare up of acne. But say like you stop the medication and it's been over six months and you're not seeing any acne, great. And if you are and if you feel like it's slowly creeping back up, then options are to start topicals if they're mild or go back on spironolactone. Now this question is very much along the same line. Do I have to take them long term? When do I know it's a good time to stop? Hormonal acne is one of those things that can just drag out for long periods of time. So it's one of those things where you don't have to, you know, if you're gonna be on spironolactone because it takes a full three months for it to fully kick in, it makes sense. I would say you wanna commit yourself to at least six months, if not one year of just planning to be on it to see how well it works for your acne. And then once it's well controlled, you can think about other cutting back to a dose that's the lowest, but still effective enough to control your acne or thinking about stopping it. And similarly, when do you know it's a good time to stop? There's no end point. It's mostly a personal choice, but I would say commit yourself to at least six months to a year. What's better? spironolactone or birth control. They both work really well when it comes to treating acne. If you look at large scale evidence and data, they both work really well. Which one to take really depends on your age, your risk factors, and you know what other medications you're on. Some women are actually on both, and I do find that for those that do, the efficacy is enhanced. Or say if a patient comes to me and they're on birth controls already and their acne is not well controlled, I will go ahead and add on spironolactone on top of that often they'll get a little bit better result with controlling their hormonal acne and definitely can be on too. We said that spironolactone is not really recommended during pregnancy, so you should not get pregnant. So if you're on a oral birth control pill, one of those that is approved to treat hormonal acne, it can be a way of making sure that you won't get pregnant while being on spironolactone and the two works well together really beautifully in adding additional efficacy in controlling hormonal acne. As far as the risk factors for being on birth control pills, number one, we don't like to give the combined estrogen and progesterone birth control pills for women who are over the age of 35, if they smoke, if their history high blood pressure, stroke, history of breast cancer. So those are some of the contraindications, right? So a lot of the older patients, like say in their 40s or even a little bit older, birth control pills is not my first really go-to. Contraindications to be on spironolactone, I would say, is if you have a history of severe kidney disease, heart disease, or on multiple other blood pressure medications that may affect your kidneys, your blood pressure, or your body's ability to metabolize potassium. But the good news with that is often we'll work with their primary care doctor in adjusting their other medications so that way they can take spironolactone safely. And usually in these patients, I may be checking some of their basic metabolic panel or their electrolyte panel to make sure that they don't run into any issues. Next question, is 200 milligram per day safe to take long-term? Should I take it all at once or split morning and night. Yes, 200 milligram is safe as long as you're tolerating it well and not having a lot of side effects. 200 milligram is definitely the upper limit when it comes to studies have shown to be the most effective or the, the highest dose when it comes to treating hormonal acne. Above 200 milligram, you probably get more side effects and less additional efficacy. But if you're tolerating it well, definitely you can take it long term. Now, spironolactone can be dosed a few ways. Number one, you should always take it with food because the bioavailability is like 99% when you do take it with food, meaning you don't really get a lot of absorption at all, if any, if you take it on an empty stomach. And you can either take it all at once or split them up into twice a day dosing. Because the half-life of spironolactone is about eight hours or so, I do find that a lot of my patients who don't tolerate it because of the side effects may benefit if it's split up into twice daily dosing, then take it all at once. Okay, this is a really good question. Probably one of the most commonly asked ones. How soon do you have to get off of spironolactone if you're planning to get pregnant. With spironolactone, unfortunately, it's a little trickier because number one, you know, it takes a few months for it to even ramp up. So if you're not on spironolactone and you're thinking of having kids, then I would say spironolactone is really not a good option to start if you're actually trying to conceive. If you are on spironolactone and you're wondering when is a good time to stop, this is where I think it's really a personal decision that you should have with your OB and or dermatologist. A couple things to think about is number one, do you 
have irregular menses. Having spotting between periods or having irregular periods is one of the side effects um, when on spironolactone. So stopping sooner than later may help you better track your period, your ovulation, and may enhance your chances of conceiving. Spironolactone, the reason why it's not recommended during pregnancy is that it has been shown mostly in rat studies that at higher doses, much higher than what we normally would take as humans, it may cause feminization of a male reproductive system. So if you have a male baby, it may affect the genital development of that baby if you take it through pregnancy. We'll never have enough studies of spironolactone for acne treatment throughout pregnancy. And there have been case reports of women who needed to be on spironolactone during pregnancy and had male babies who had no issues. So all of this is theoretical. The good news is that spironolactone does not affect your fertility, nor does it affect your chances of really getting pregnant. It's one of those things where, again, it's a personal decision, but I think what makes sense should be based on your personal choice. But like say, if you wanna stop a month or two and then before you actually conceive, I would say that may be a good time frame for you to consider. Next question. Do you avoid if there is a family history of breast cancer? And I'll extend that question to, you know, is it contraindicated even in those individuals who have a history of breast cancer? The answer is no, you don't have to avoid. Studies have shown that spironolactone does not increase your risk of breast cancer or other uterine cancer or ovarian cancer. The risk of cancer with spironolactone really has only been demonstrated, again, mouse models when they're given orally 50 to 100 times the dose we would ever take. And keep in mind that animals have a different you know, metabolic pathway than humans. And in these rats, they develop benign malignant tumors. But we do know from really big, large scale studies in humans when it comes to use of spironolactone, which has been, you know, over 20 plus years for the treatment of acne and hirsutism, that there has not been any increased risk of breast cancer. In fact, they even looked at studies of women who've been on spironolactone, whether they develop breast cancer or not. And again, there has been no differences in increased risk of breast cancer in those who were exposed to those who are non-exposed. So that's it guys. I hope this gives you a better understanding of spironolactone and its side effects. Please, if you have hormonal acne. You can check out my other video on the details, but speak with your dermatologist on spironolactone. It can be a very good option for you when it comes to controlling your acne. If you have any other question on spironolactone, please comment below or any other topics that you want me to do like a Q&A, comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.